Hello, this is Pastor Rob Pinkler, and I want to continue a devotional theme, uh, Changing Mindsets. And in this particular devotion, I want us to consider what it means to change Jewish minds about Jesus as the Son of God. And there are a number of things that would have to be uh, considered if we're going to witness to Jesus, or witness about Jesus, to a Jewish person. Let me start by reading Psalm 1, or a portion of it. I'm sorry, Psalm 2. Psalm 2, not Psalm 1, Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage, and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, and against his anointed, the Messiah, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart, and cast away their cords from us. He who sins, uh, I'm sorry, he who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And then later on, we are told in verse 12, kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. So the point here that we need to make to a Jewish believer, or I'm sorry, a Jewish person who we want to be made a believer, is that the son of God is not a concept that is from the New Testament, it's not a concept that starts there. It's not a concept that starts with the Greeks or the pagans. The Son of God is a fact of the Old Testament. God speaks of his Son, the Messiah. What's more in Psalm 110, which our Lord Jesus quotes himself, we find that the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. We find that the Lord, the Father, speaks to the Son, who is Lord, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father until that time when everything is put under his feet. So we find uh, also, by the way, in Proverbs, the last chapter, that God has a Son. So the notion that the Son of God is a concept created by pagans and imposed on the New Testament is false. In the Old Testament, God has a son. Now, a Jewish person might say, well, but we find that Jesus claims to be the incarnate God, and God doesn't become a man. But that's also false. Because in the Old Testament, God became flesh a number of times. He became flesh and ate with Abraham and Sarah. He became flesh and wrestled with Jacob at the brook Jabbok. He became flesh and spoke to Gideon. He became flesh and spoke to the parents of Samson over and over again. God became flesh and made himself someone who could be spoken to in the flesh. It's quite true then that God has become a man from time to time. The difference with Jesus in that incarnation is that he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. In other words, from conception. He took on flesh. So the question would be, well, why would he have to do that? And the answer is that according to Isaiah 53, the Messiah had to suffer and bear the sins of every human being. And he had to come that way because God had promised in Genesis 3 that there would be a virgin conception. And that God would send 
this miraculous man into the earth to save us from the power of the devil. And he did so by taking on our sins and the wrath that we deserve. And we find in Isaiah 53 that the Son of God would become flesh, die, and rise again. What's more is Zechariah chapter uh, 10, verse 12. We find, I'm sorry, uh, verse chapter 12, verse 10. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, and following, we find that God himself declares that he is the one who they pierced on the cross. And this one is also the Son. So over and over again in the Old Testament, we find that God becomes incarnate, and that God has a Son, and that the Son is, in fact, God in the flesh, who takes on our sins, that we might live through faith in him. Now, of course, a Jewish person might also say, well, according to the law, someone who's hung on the tree is cursed by God. And that's perfectly true. We read that, and it's affirmed in Galatians chapter 3. But please take note that the one who went to the cross was cursed not for his sins, but he bore the sins of others and bore our curse. That's what we find in Isaiah 53. So Jesus became the Lamb of God. He became a human being and bore our sin and was the perfect sacrifice, completely sinless, and took on our human flesh for every human being so that we might live with God as he bore the penalty for our sin. And that's what we need to share with the Jewish people about Jesus. He is the Son of God. Because God has a son. That's what it says in the Old Testament. He did die for our sins, but that's what the Old Testament said he would do. He became incarnate, went to the cross, was pierced for our transgressions. Because the Bible says that's the way it will be. And what's more, we find in the Bible that God, in the Old Testament, that God is triune. He is one, but he is also Elohim. There's a plurality in the unity of God. And we find that in chapter 1 where God says, let us make man in our image, the image of God, we were created. So there's a triune nature of God and human beings for me in that triune nature. It is not blasphemy or against the Old Testament to say that God is one and yet God is three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You find all of them mentioned in Scripture. So we need to provide this with our Jewish friends. Let them know what the Old Testament says, and invite them to meet Jesus as he is, the Son of God, the incarnate God, the one who came to take away their sins and our sins, the eternal Son, not, not a man who became God, but God who became flesh and dwelt among us. This is how we begin to share with our Jewish friends about Jesus and change their minds about who Jesus is. So next time we meet, we'll talk about changing mindsets. But for today, let's consider changing the mindsets of our Jewish neighbors about Jesus as the Son of God. And let's begin with the Old Testament and show them where he is the fulfillment of their scriptures and ours.